Well, hello YouTube and hello quilty friends. Welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to be talking about the prairie flower quilt seeds and some other things prairie. But um, so in my last, let's see, it's fall now, so it would have been spring market when I was showing you my prairie uh, storyboard. You know how I do, I bring that out and show you everything that's in there, the fabric, all that. Well, I was introducing my quilt seeds. And so here is what they look like. And here is the back. So this opens up like that. And I designed these to look like vintage seed packets and with very nice thick paper so that quilt shops, so they come like this with the pattern in them. Quilt shops can sell them all in a set like this. They can sell them singly or they can do them as a block of the month. And um, we were really excited to introduce these to you um, with the Prairie Collection. And for the next couple of collections, at least I know that I have some, you know, some other quilt seeds. These happen to be um, flowers that you grow out of a seed, but they don't, they're not necessarily going to be blocks about things that you grow from seeds. Um, the title of quilt seeds means it's your, it's an idea. You know, the quilt seeds is the pattern. And then um, I didn't finish saying that I wanted to do these opened envelopes so that you can reopen them and close them so the quilt shops could actually cut the kits for each individual block and put inside if they wanted to. And I know some quilt shops have been cutting the entire kits for all of them and just packaging those separately. But a lot of quilt shops have been doing that very thing as putting them individually in here. And so that's kind of fun. Um, after I've sown my quilt seeds, which I have, which I'll be showing you, then I'm using these now because, you know, I love packaging and I love designing packaging and I love to keep these on display because they look like little quilt seed packets. So I'm putting them on a clothesline with clothespins in my sewing room here. And I think that'd be really fun, but you know, they would be cute in other rooms in my house too, but you know, maybe in my family room or something like that. But anyway, that's an idea to use with the packaging. I've had a lot of people ask me, um, you know, ideas on what to do with them. Of course, you could frame them, you could do whatever you want. But, um, so this is how big these, the patterns themselves are, are about six and a half by nine and a half. The actual quilt seeds, the flowers, finish at 10 by 20. Okay, and um, let's see. I think that's all I wanna say about the patterns themselves. You can use all six of them. You can do them individually. Now, what I did was I sewed all six of them, of course, and then I will not just leave you hanging on not giving you at least an idea on how to finish them. What these are for, the quilt seeds, is I want you to be able to um, just use these as a jumping off point for creativity, for making many things out of that, out of these seed packets and these patterns out of these single block patterns. And I'll give you several ideas here in a few minutes, but that's where the name quilt seeds came from. It's just kind of an idea. But again, I do always want to do at least one thing with a finishing. So I did a bed runner, which you could use for a table runner, but I did do a bed runner with all six of these. And um, so you saw that in the opening slideshow that Cassidy did and I just went out in the backyard and took several pictures of the runner because it's pretty wide and um, it's pretty long and you know what I didn't write those measurements down I don't know why but so I just wanted you to be able to see the whole thing so that's why I took pictures of it but I will show like sideways maybe some close-up this is the border this is the binding now the backing, I used one of my prim wide backs on because the prairie wide back is not here yet. It won't be here until the end of the month. And of course I taught this at Thanksgiving Point at Garden of Quilts, the festival we do in September, uh, Riley Blake, that's what I mean by we, <laughs> does the Garden of Quilts every year. And I taught this bed runner so I needed to have it quilted and everything. 
and I wanted to be able to give you the setting. So if I kind of fold these a little bit, maybe you can see part of each flower individually putting them sideways. Then you can see the prairie fabrics, you know, the backgrounds, how they work together. And so there is a free PDF download that I will leave a link to in the, below the, this video in the description area. Just click on that where it says show more or the little arrow um, in my description and you can download the finishing. Of course, you'll need the, you know, when I say the free PDF, it's, you'll need, you'll need all these and to have sewn all these, but the PDF shows just the finishing and the yardage required and how to put it into a bed runner. Okay, so if you want to do, um, you know, other things with all six flowers, I wrote down, you know, here's my little notebook that I always write in for my, for my videos. Look, it's getting... Uh, short on paper because I keep ripping the papers out when I'm finished. But here's my little um, ideas. Let me pull this in. You know what the patterns look like now, so I'll just I'll hand those to cast to set aside. The, the blocks, each flower itself without these borders or anything, is this is 10 inches and this is 10 inches. So it's 10 by 20 finished each block is. So this is the little mini quilt that I made with just a single block, okay? And with a single block, I think it's really fun to just make a wall quilt out of it, which is what I have done. I love to hang quilts on my wall, but I love to hang just single block or mini quilts on my wall as well. You could also, so I just put like a two and a half inch border around it and then bound it use the same backing that was left over from the runner, okay? And my friend Julie Stubbs quilted all of these and did a fabulous job as always. You could make this into a pillow. They don't have a 10 by 20, or this would be now because there's two inches, there's 14 by 24. They don't have that standard pillow size, but you could make your own or you could make two blocks next to each other and so that would be square and make it into a pillow. You could make it into a bag, okay? So this would be really cute by adding fabric on the sides like strips of fabric and adding handles and make a tote bag. You can do a table topper, like this would go good on, the, on an end table or something like that. I like to put little quilts on my furniture to protect them from you know, drinks and all of that stuff. So um, before I go on to talk about what you can do with all six, I'm going to um, have Cassidy put in some pictures here, some close up, closer up pictures of the bed runner slash table runner so that you can kind of see in my backyard kind of what it looks like, the whole thing. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed those photos. You could kind of get a glimpse of the entire bed runner. And then, so I wanted to continue talking about this a little bit. I wanted to also say that you could put it, I wrote in my notes, you could put just one block, and of course it doesn't have to be this quilt seed, it can be any of the other flowers. You can j just put one block in the center of a quilt and add smaller blocks around it. So because this measures 10 inches and this is 10 inches, so that means it's 20 inches, like five inch blocks surrounding it would work out for the math. And that would be really fun. And you can also, if you wanted to do six inch blocks, you would just add enough border around here that it would measure in six inch increments. So you could do that. You could also um, do this for friends for gift giving and put it in a gift basket or a care basket or anything. So if you had a really cute basket with some fun gifts in there, like, you know, a candle or treats or a mug and some tea or something like that, 
you could put this in the bottom of the basket like a cloth and put the gifts around it or you could roll it up i often you know i keep these rolled up a lot so they don't get so wrinkled when they're folded you could roll it up and put a cute bow around it and add that into a gift basket so those are just some of the things that i do with single quilt blocks but because these are not square and it's larger i mean you could do a placemat but you know it's kind of like sideways so i don't know if you would want to do that another thing um for now i'll just move on for just a second and talk about the bed table runner so i'm using mine on the bottom of my bed and so I wanted all the flowers to face the same way. But sometimes if I'm doing a table runner, then I will make each flower go upside down and right side up. And you don't even have to use all six flowers. You could use five or four, depending on the length of your table and what you wanted to do. But sometimes when they're on a table, it's really fun to kind of put them upside down and right side up because then depending on what side of the table you're sitting on, then, you know, you can see the flowers right side up. Let me bring this back in. So, um, one more thing. So you could take this and make all six of the flowers and you could frame them if you wanted to, but instead of putting them in frames, you can just, it's a lot less expensive and you have more control over the colors of the binding. Just use different backgrounds like they are in the pattern for the little borders and then you can just use different um, fabric prints from Prairie for the binding and then you can put them in wall arrangements for a wall gallery which is what I often do. So because there's six of them you can stack three on top of each other or you could put all six of them across from each other. Sometimes it's really hard to decorate a real big really wide wall that you don't want one huge quilt on um, this this arrangement looks really nice above a sofa. Sometimes you have a wall that's tall and skinny, especially for those of us who have cathedral ceilings in our home. Sometimes you want to go up a little bit higher. So you could stack them like this, two across and three rows. So that's just kind of an idea of what you could do with these um, prairie flower quilt seeds if you're doing individual blocks and just want to do one of each, or even if you want to just do one. And then for the multiple blocks, of course, you can do a quilt, but um, you can just make several of these flowers. And what I would do if I was making a big quilt and making several of them, depending on how big I wanted my quilt. Now, remember when I said the top measures 10 inches and the bottom measures 10 inches, I would probably switch the leaves up and see, you know, how they have different, they're each, all the flowers are different and all the leaves are different. So I may take this set of leaves, here, let me open this up since I, so I would take like, um, you know, this set of leaves and maybe put it on this flower and take this set of leaves and put it on that flower. You can mix those up so they, all the blocks don't look exactly the same. And then I would maybe color this blue one for my second set of blocks for my quilt. I would use the purple fabrics or I would take this orange and use the blue prints. And there's several other prints in Prairie as well that you could use that were not used in the quilt seeds just because, you know, there's 42 prints and we didn't need that many prints in all of the quilt seeds. So that's another idea to mix up the blocks and stuff if you're making a quilt. Now, um, I think that's kind of all I needed to tell you about the quilt seeds, other than I wanted to thank you so much for all of the kind words about these and the excitement about my quilt seeds. And thank you to the quilt shops for the support. I really, really appreciate it. And um, before I go on and talk about other things prairie, I just wanted to pull this in. I have shown you this already in my last market, but I just kind of wanted to let you know that these are my quilt seeds. Hope you can see all of those right there for that will be coming out in December with my next collection, which is Calico. And so this is what the packets look like. The packets are the exact same size and everything and same closable features so that you can put, you know, the fabric in there or whatever you want to do as quilt shops. Um, 
these finish, the, all of the quilt seeds are not, blocks are not gonna be the same size. These finish at um, 16 by 18, this block right here. So it's not a 16 inch square. There's just two extra inches that I needed to do to fit all of these veggies in. And I do want to let you know that I'll be doing a video along with another free P PDF with the finishing of these blocks. It's a really cute quilt. There's other blocks that go with it. It will be a free PDF and I'll do that here when it comes time, you know, at the first of next year sometime and show you because again, I don't want to leave you. I never want to leave you hanging. I want you to, you know, be the boss of your own quilt. Use these quilt seeds to be creative. Hopefully the quilt shops, you know, can come up or will want to come up with their own settings as well. Um, but I will always have something for you and not just leave you hanging with just individual quilt seeds. But these, I think you can do with these, everything that I just told you you could do with individual blocks. These are perfect for the kitchen. These packets, when I'm finished with those, will go on a clothesline in my kitchen window because they go in my kitchen. So again, these finish at 16 by 18, so they're quite large blocks. I will have an entire quilt, a gardening quilt, um, to finish these with. But I did copy these off. This is not actual size, but still they're larger than in their photo so that you can see. I wanted you to be able to see the blocks here. So that is the squash block, calico squash. So we've got zucchini and, you know, all kinds of different squashes and that kind of stuff. And of course, this is the tomatoes. We've got cherry tomatoes and all different tomatoes there. These are all, again, made with calico. There's my pumpkin block. Excited about that. And I love veggie blocks. So, you know, as you know, I'm a gardener. So, and then here's my corn and peas. And then we've got peppers along with jalapeno, you know, red peppers, yellow peppers, green peppers. And then here are the root vegetables. So this is a carrot, potato, onion, and beets or turnips, whatever you want it to be. And so those are my quilt seeds for my next collection. So I just kind of wanted to talk about those a little bit so that you can kind of be familiar with the quilt seed program and how it works. So, but today we're going back to Prairie because I wanted to kind of show you the things that are going on with Prairie as well. So this is my um, fabric that I put on the back of this runner. This is the Wildflowers runner. Okay, and I'm just gonna kind of fold it. This comes in, so this is called Prairie Wildflowers. You can get the pattern within the kit. It's a boxed kit. I always do a kit with five inch stackers. Okay, and that's, and it's usually a runner. Sometimes it's like a table topper, but um, this one is a runner. And so I really like how these two look together. I might end up hanging this on the wall or hanging this on the wall and then putting this over the back of a chair because they look so cute together. In fact, I photoed them together in the backyard too. So I'm gonna stop right here for just a second and have um, Cassidy Grace put uh, photos of these two in so that you can see them a little bit closer. Okay, so that's the, here sis, I wanna, so I can pull something else in. So this is my kit for called Shoe Fly Stars, made from Prairie, and it's for the 10 inch stackers. I've got threads all over it. Now this is just a quilt top because yes, the quilt top is all complete and finished, but I am waiting for the Prairie wide back which, like I said before, which will be in the end of this month. These are the two Prairie Wideback prints. 
Let me show you the border on that and the cornerstones. This is the one I'm planning on using for the back of this quilt. And this is the one that I'm planning on using for the back of my sew along quilt that is Prairie Meadow that's going on right now. I'll show you those blocks that I have finished so far in just a minute. Before I show you those, though, I wanted to um, maybe unfold this a little bit so you can see a few of these blocks. So this is all pieced. Oh, and I, I forgot to answer a few questions about my um, seed packets, my quilt seeds. They're all pieced blocks. They're not applique. They're not done with my So Simple Shapes. And everything that I've shown you so far um, is all rotary cut and machine piece. The only thing I have used applique on is my prairie meadow blocks, which I'll show you in a minute. But here's some of these blocks, shoe fly stars, which is a very traditional block that I've always loved. I love star blocks and you know, I never get tired of making star blocks. And so it's just the same block and just fabric placed in different ways. There's that one. I really loved how the purple and the teals look together. I've got threads all over this. <laughs> and here's one with the purples and denims. I like how that looks together as well. There's just a lot of different variations that you can make with this quilt. And I love how vintage and old fashioned this looks because of the traditional block and the prints. And I can't wait to Get this quilted and get it over to Julie when the wide back comes and so that that can go in my home as well. Okay, sis, can you hand me the, the blocks that I have done so far? So I have eight done so far because I'm working a little bit ahead, but this is Prairie Meadow, what it looks like. Okay, so we have 12 16 inch applique blocks that are done with my Prairie Meadow set of So Simple Shapes. And then of course you do piece the blocks together and then we have a little scrappy border with the fabrics. So let me just bring these in. I'm going to try to put this kind of like right there so you can see most of the block. And I'll just go in order of what I have finished. So this is block one. And I did uh, this. My so long takes place on my blog, but I do do a YouTube video on block one just so that I can explain a lot of things and I can show you things in person and actually you can watch me sew and turn and press the shapes. So there's block one. Here's block two. Now all of these blocks, I love how they go together, but they're actually spring, summer, fall, winter blocks. And so you could take, they look great together. That's why it's a sampler, but you could take a block like this that to me looks like fall. I designed it to look like fall. Of course, it's got the fall leaves in there, but you literally could take this and make three of them and make a runner. You could, you could make several of these. You could make 12 of these for a beautiful fall quilt. You could put a 16 inch pieced block in between the blocks if you wanted to, or you could just sash them or whatever you wanted to do. But I love all of these blocks, how they look together again, but I want them to be able to stand on their own and so once you've, you know, used those so simple shapes and purchased that set, I always like you to be able to, you know, use them over and over again. So I hope that's as centered as I can get it. This to me looks like a spring block because of the tulips. And so that's block three. Block four, I designed this, to me it looks Christmassy, even though it's not traditional red and green. Um, it's just, I don't know, with the stars and with the red, it really could go all year round, but to me, it kind of has a Christmas feel to it. If you wanted it specifically Christmas, you could just only replace these flowers 
with a red, another red, and it would be completely red and green, you know, with a little bit of gold. I mean, you could put make these gold flowers as well and then put red centers. I don't know. But anyway, that could be Christmassy. But if you wanted to make these denim right here and maybe the centers of this denim, I don't know, it would totally be patriotic because of the stars. And that would be red, white, and blue. So this one is really fun. This is the first block that I've used using my plum colors. And I've always liked uh, the plum tones of purples. And so this is plum and this is taffy. And I love how they look with pink and green. It looks very spring to me. But again, just by using these same blocks and using different colors. So for instance, this one looks very patriotic and I would totally make an entire patriotic quilt out of this. Because it's red, white, and blue already, it looks patriotic. But you can make it spring by making these uh, plum colored or pink or whatever. And then all of a sudden it turns into a spring quilt. You know, because of the tulips as well, too. So, always think about color placement. And for this quilt, I just try to use color throughout and spread them throughout the quilt. Now, this is the block that's coming up next Monday. And so, of course, I have that prepared. And I think this totally looks summer. I love this. I love the lighter blues. And this is my heirloom cottage. So I have a cottage color that I use that is more a true aqua. And then for some of these um, prints that I've done later that I want to look a little bit more vintage, then I have done them in heirloom, what I call heirloom. So that's what this is. This is so sweet. I love these little corner daisies here. That's so fun. And then I worked even farther ahead because I'm going to be out of town for this one. So I made this one, but of course I made this one a long time ago when I got the prairie pre-yardage because I couldn't wait. And this one definitely says summer, but it could go into fall because these, you could put a brown center here. These would look like sunflowers and maybe a deeper schoolhouse red, you know, for these flowers or something. But anyway, that's, you know, so far, what I have finished on Prairie. And I hope you guys are enjoying Prairie. I appreciate you so much, your wonderful comments. I love seeing them on Instagram, all of the different projects, you know, excluding these that I've shown you that I designed to go with the collection. Um, I love seeing so many quilts and patterns being done with Prairie and that just warms my heart. I thank you and I'm thanking you so much for your comments, for liking this video, for following and subscribing to my channel. If you'd like to see all of my tutorials and episodes, please subscribe and when you do, hit the bell and because then you'll receive notifications of when I have, have filmed. And so that's all I have to say about today and about Prairie. I'm continuing on with the sew along and of course I'll be, that's on my blog every Monday. And I will be back next week to film and I will chat with you later.